Hello, you metal pilgrims, and welcome to yet another episode of our review series. There aren't, to be honest with you, that many bands who are as consistent and as influential in their genres as the melodic death metal pioneers' uh, dark tranquility are in theirs. Yet despite being on the forefront of shaping the band's uh, the style sound for the past 30 years, um, the band has never been afraid of experimenting and exploring new horizons, musically speaking. And this is exactly what the band has done on their latest record, Moment, uh, which will be released on November 20th this year. So let's take a track-by-track track look at what the Gothenburg crew has got for us. But as always, before we start, I'd like to take a moment and invite you to join the conversation and subscribe to Metal Pilgrim channel on YouTube, join our communities on Instagram, Facebook, or any other social media you actually hang out at. Uh, do not miss any of the exclusive interviews, submit your questions for future guests, reviews, and first-hand rock and metal news. So here you go. So actually, a couple of weeks ago, I had a pleasure of welcoming Mikhail Stane on the show. And uh, in that episode, Mikhail spoke about the creative process behind the album, uh, what it was like to work with the newcomers in the band, and much, much more. So if you haven't yet, make sure to check it out uh, in addition to this video. But let's go and take a look at what's inside the album. The album's opening track, uh, The Phantom Day, starts with a simple and mysterious slow intro, uh, yet quickly evolves into this fierce and powerful heavy track. The song has been released as one of the album's singles, you know, to ease the listener's way into what, uh, you know, the sound of moment is going to be like. And just like on Adama, uh, the band continues to mess around a lot with the song's, you know, classical structures. And while the song is clearly, you know, a natural involvement on what we have heard on the previous record, it still hints on the direction in which, you know, the moment sound will be going. Extensive yet not overly lengthy, you know, dueling guitar solo by the band's newcomers Christopher Amott and uh, Johan Reinholds actually paints a you know, a melancholic picture, which will be a running thread throughout, uh, you know, the record. It is a great opening track. The following track, Transient, uh, you know, taps into the older sound even more. It's simple, and when I say simple, please do not confuse it with easy, you know, but the simple, you know, rhythm section uh, led by the steady drum beat, accompanied by the recurrent guitar lick, you know, actually make this track one of the most straightforward ones uh, on the album. Yeah, there's this masterful guitar solo, and it is what adds colors and helps build in, you know, a song's climax, which I personally thought was impossible to build just a moment ago, and thus dismissing the case of this song being potentially flat, which could have been built by, you know, the band's critics. Identical to None is simply a melodic death metal uh, song straight out of a textbook. And this textbook is actually, you know, co-written by Dark Tranquility itself. Vigorous guitar melody, accompanied by a robust rhythm section, actually storms in right from the song's, uh, you know, first accords and, um, you know, in this intro, and keeps the momentum going throughout the entire track, making it possibly one of the most, um, you know, dynamic songs on a uh, moment. Simple yet very memorable verse, uh, you know, followed by this short, powerful bridge, builds the necessary excitement uh, of a listener for this very, very catchy, yet not too poppy chorus. And uh, the song's melody will get stuck in your head for, you know, hours to come, I can guarantee you that, and make you want to come back for it again and again. So a great track once again. Just like its predecessor, The Dark and Broken has been released as one of the three singles prior to the album being officially out. And it is on this track where you can hear the melancholic thread of moment being put on the forefront of the, you know, sound sound. Masterful yet non-intrusive guitar solo actually doesn't take you away from the enchantment. Uh, rather the opposite, it actually speeds up the trail of thoughts 
which has been evoked by the song's melody in your head, uh, just like it does with the song's tempo towards the suspicious end, which opens the gates into a darker and, you know, and slower and a more desolate part of the album. Remaining the Unknown is a magnificent slow tempo piece, uh, beautiful in its venture of, you know, shaping this pensive atmosphere, uh, making you close your eyes and imagine the outer shores of uh, distant and now known worlds full of vivid colors. Yet despite uh, being very slow and somewhat melancholic, uh, the song is actually full of hope and hues. Uh, it is worth pointing out the keyboards part, which, uh, being on the you know vanguard of shaping this song's melody, is responsible for developing the thoughtful yet very uplifting you know feeling. And despite not being the heaviest or you know the, not the most melodically advanced uh, tracks on the album, this actually makes the cut as being one of the strongest one on a uh, moment uh, on the entire record. Uh, the following one, Standstill, builds on the foundation uh, laid by the previous track. Uh, it is much more a beat uh, with a simple verse theme and, uh, you know, and a somewhat unexpected chorus line. Um, in the latter, Mikhail actually changes his voice completely to a clean one. And while this is not something that, you know, Mikhail has not done previously, even on this record, um, together with the sweetness of uh, the chorus's melody, you know, some might say that it is somewhat cheesy. And probably it is, uh, yet somehow, and I'm not exactly sure how, but it does not bother me. Even more, I actually like it a lot. And uh, here is why. This song has been placed in a perfect spot on the album's track list. You know, um, and while I might have not actually understood it if it was taken out of the content, it works as a great follow-up and at the same time a perfect foreword uh, to other compositions. Ego Deception opens with a synthesized uh, keyboard intro, well familiar in its sound to every dark tranquility got modern fan, uh, followed by a wonderful and a somewhat bold, to be honest with you, rhythm section. Uh, it is the efforts of Anders uh, Gewerp and Anders Iwers that I have to point out, and the, which deserve the upload the most here. Irregular drum beat with a powerful bass line not only create a backbone uh, for, you know, for the track, but also contribute a lot to its melody, believe it or not, allowing Mikhail and other musicians to actually experiment with their sound and, uh, you know, explore new structural forms. And that thread is actually followed on a drawn out exit. It is a much, much uh, darker track with uh, little to absolutely non melodic offshoots, you know. The song's vibe is gloomy and heavy from the very beginning to its very last note. Uh, Mikael's um, growl in this one actually sounds, you know, vigorous and like a desperate animal's roar. Um, you know, and the band's newcomers, guitarists, uh, you know, their lines are very coherent with the overall sound and feel of the track. The next song, Eyes of the World, uh, once again resonates with the sound of the early 2000s for me personally. Sturdy verse is quickly overshadowed by this lyrical chorus uh, in which Mikhail and the band show their much more sensitive side. Um, I'll be honest with you, the chorus might be read rated, you know, one too many times for my personal taste. Yet overall, this is a very, you know, pleasant and enjoyable track. Um, it is followed by Fail State, a rapid and powerful track with multiple evocations to the band's, uh, you know, various sound throughout the years. Um, the melody itself is vigorous and even somewhat aggressive, you know, at some points, with the old musicians working in the synergy to paint an image of an unstoppable force heading towards its destination, ignoring any obstacles on its way. And Mikhail's forceful growl only, you know, reasserts the above image, uh, you know, by adding colors to it. Empire's Lost to Time uh, simply confirms the band's status of the masters of the melodic death metal songwriting. With multiple melody variations, tempo changes, and the powerful breakdowns, this track is probably, you know, the most elaborate and dynamic song on the record. There is this captivating piano solo that kind of lets you breathe for just a moment, uh, yet gets quickly adjourned 
uh, by the song's main theme. And its guitar counterpart towards the song's end, you know, mimics the keyboard part at first, yet takes the song melody to yet a new one, absolutely unexpected journey. And Mikhail's scream towards the end of this voyage uh, simply gives you shivers, you know, leading straight into the chorus being sung one more time. This is definitely my personal favorite on the record. On the album's closer in Truth Divided, the band decided to slow down and emphasize the melancholic aspect of the album one more time. The song itself takes you on a journey through your inner cells, makes you close your eyes, you know, once again, and uh, leaves an open end in fact, allowing you to think about what the band's next chapter is going to be like. It is hard for Dark Tranquility to top itself, being one of the most consistent uh, bands out there and releasing, you know, great and uh, absolutely stunning material year after year. And yet with every new record, their fans are finding something that new that they will kind of cherish and hold up as a standard uh, on the future records. And thus the band's discography should not be looked um, on as a competition between, you know, the band's records, but rather appreciated as a continuous work in progress in which every album paints something new on this canvas. And after 30 years, the band still finds inspiration for being on the foreground of the genre and not letting it remain, you know, unvarying. And if you know me, uh, you know that if I say that this album is good, it's actually amazing. And what I'm going to say about this one is that it is one of the best albums of the year. It's 9 out of 10.